Hello everyone, welcome to my talk on Rolling Your Own SSO, a practical guide with OpenIDict. A little bit about me. My name is Dustin Kangan, and I'm a .NET developer with 14 years experience. I mainly focused on authentication, APIs, and enterprise integration. I organize the Michigan.NET Users Group in Southfield, Michigan. You can find us on Meetup under the .NET Foundation, and I help to organize the Michigan Technology Conference. So why do I care about authentication? Authentication is core to every application. It's something that developers don't usually think about too much necessarily. They're mostly focused on writing all the business logic in their code. And the last thing that they usually come back to is, all right, now we need to make sure that the people that are coming in here are the people that we want. So this presentation is focused on putting authentication forward and being able to meet the needs of your users beforehand. So, this presentation is going to go into why I needed OpenIDict, and then we're going to go explore what is OpenIDict and how does it work. And we're going to have two demos, one on getting started using OpenIDict, and then we're going to integrate a custom backend into that, so custom data storage and SQL Server. And then in closing, we'll go through some best practices when deploying to production. So why I needed OpenIDict. So I was working on a project and it goes back 20, 25 years. The database has a lot of different tables for users and permissions, and it's been used by multiple different applications with different functionality that all need to log in, log in the same users. Each of these applications is written in .NET Framework to the latest .NET Core, and they all have different ways of doing the authentication logic because they all need to hit these different tables. On top of that, we are integrating with an identity provider, ADFS, that we really don't control. So this is a simplified example of the database. We have the accounts, and the accounts have account information that comes from a separate system. And then we have users, which belong to an account. And the user's username comes from ADFS. And then on top of that, we have the internal user, which is a reference table of which users are internal to the company or not. And then we have permissions, which comes from yet another data source. So before what we were doing was each of our different application had different logic and they were all hitting ADFS and doing their different things. So afterwards we added in the authentication server, which centralized all that logic. So now each individual application just hits the authentication server and that goes back to ADFS, which returns the ADFS claims. And then on top of that, we go out to our own database in order to get our claims and add them back in. And then each of the applications has a consistent view of the world. In summary, what I was really looking for out of OpenIDict is having consistent ID token between the applications because I don't control the ADFS or what comes back from that, but I do control what's in my applications. So being able to take what's coming from ADFS and add in additional claims from our database was what we really wanted to do instead of having to repeat that logic over and over again in each application. And then I wanted to increase the reliability from using that ADFS server because obviously I'm not managing the uptime of that and our team and our company is not managing the uptime of that. So we need a way to where if ADFS went down, people could still keep using the applications without having to worry about, oh, I click login and ADFS is down, so I can't log in. Well, if I clicked login and I have a session from earlier in the day, then I should be able to get back on the application. So now let's explore OpenIDict. So OpenIDIC was created in 2015, and it supports the common OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect flows. It requires minimal coding. You can kind of think of it like an appliance. You just write the code once, and then after that, you just want to do, do regular upgrades to make sure it's secure. But other than that, it should maintain itself. And OpenIDIC supports persistent sessions, so you can keep your session on that server without having to keep going back to the identity providers that you implement. And it's also self-managing, so you don't really have to worry about that much. So OpenIDIC has three different modes. It has the client modes that you can use to integrate with external identity providers. And then it has the server mode, which you can use to create your own provider. And then you have the validation mode, which allows you to protect your APIs. So let's explore that a little bit. So the OpenID client mode, this allows your different applications to be able to hit an identity provider. So OpenID server allows you to create different identity servers that your applications can use. And finally, OpenID validation. This allows your API to be protected. So you have an application, it's gonna go out to your identity provider, 
you get a token back, and then that token is going to be validated by the OpenIDIC validation library on your API. So OpenIDIC supports all the major operating systems, Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. And on top of that, it also supports mobile and web and native. So OpenIDIC has different storage backends that you can integrate with. You can integrate with EF or EF Core, Mongo, Dynamo, and CouchDB. In addition to that, it also integrates with the data protection API, so that way you can encrypt your tokens at rest and keep things secure. And then to automate those cleanup tasks, it uses Quartz.net. So if you're using that, then you can just integrate it what you already have, or if you're not using Quartz.net, you can just opt out of that and just use like a database cleanup job. So let's briefly go over a couple of the common OpenID Connect flows. So we have the authorization code flow. So this is where your client, the application, is going to request that the user logs in. The user is going to get redirected over to the authorization server. It's going to perform its authentication logic, return the code back to the user, which is going to submit that to the client, and then the client's going to redeem that code for a token. Then we have the client credentials flow where a backend application will use a client ID in secret to redeem an access token and access APIs. So let's start with the getting started demo. So in the getting started demo, this is based on the Volusia sample. So OpenIDict has samples on their GitHub that you can use for different reference implementations that you could potentially use. So in this sample, it uses both local accounts and GitHub for login. And this is, this uses the ASP.NET Core identity backend. So you have all those predefined tables. And on our client, it requires a minimal OpenID Connect setup to get it working. So in the demo, we have two applications. We have our client and our server. So in the server, in order to use OpenID, we just need to add the OpenID packages in here. So we're so this sample uses ASP.NET Core integration, the Entity Framework Core, and the Quartz. So the interesting part is going to be in our program. So this is going to use any framework core. So we're going to need to add open IDICT into here to add support. And then it's going to be using the ASP.NET Core identity in order to log manage the logins. And then we're going to add quartz for our cleanup jobs. And then here's the interesting part here is configuring the open IDICT. So open IDICT the first thing you want to do is hook into the core and then use this with any framework and quartz. Then on top of that, we're going to add the client. So the client is going to be for the identity provider server, this server in order to reach out to GitHub. So we're going to add in the authorization code flow and then we're going to add in our certificates and then we're going to allow this to be passed through and use the system net. And on top of that, we provide the GitHub for, the GitHub and the redirect URI for GitHub. Then on the server portion, this is going to be for our identity server to provide to our client applications. We're going to enable the endpoints for authorize, logout, token, and user info. We're going to register our scopes with the application. And then we're going to use the authorization code flow, which is the first flow that we went through that we're going to need to log in to the client application with. And we're going to add in our certificates and we're going to pass these through to ASP.NET Core. Then finally, we're going to add in our validation, which is going to be for validating APIs. And below here, it is not that interesting. So then we can go through our authentication controller. This is going to have a callback for GitHub. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to read the tokens off of the GitHub and then store this in a local cookie on the server. And the next thing that is going to happen is the authorization. So we have the authorization endpoint that we're enabling. So when our client application goes into the identity server, it's going to not be authenticated. So then at that point, it's going to need to be challenged in order to redirect to either the local login or go over to GitHub. And then once it performs that GitHub authentication, it's going to come back here and it's going to have that local session state. And once it has that, then we can read that local session state and issue our token. And on top of that, we can use the user info endpoint to add in any extra tokens that we'd like from our database. All right, now we're going to go through our client application. So in the client, 
This is a standard OpenID Connect implementation just using the Microsoft reference implementation. So this is going to use our authority, client ID, secret, and then we're going to specify our custom redirect paths. And other than that, it's pretty standard. The only thing we really added from the normal sample is just login and logout endpoints just to trigger that. So now we can go into our sample. So on the identity server, it has a UI here and we can use that to register an account. You can either register a local account or use GitHub to register an account. And other than that, we can just log in using a username and password or just going through GitHub. But we're not going to do that. We are going to go to our client and hit login. And then we're going to get redirected to our identity server. And then once we hit GitHub, it's going to go out to GitHub and log us in through that, store that over on the identity server, and then we are going to be logged in on the client. So in the next demo, we're going to go through implementing custom data storage for our existing application. So this custom data storage is based on the MIMIM sample inside of the samples repository. And this is going to pass through straight to GitHub. It is not going to use the ASP.NET Core identity. And we're going to have a very minimal implementation. If you're going to be implementing this for production, I recommend using the first getting started sample. But we just want to demonstrate using our own data storage. So in this sample, we have two applications. We have the authentication server and the client. So in the application server, as with before, we're registering with Entity Framework, and then we are no longer using Quartz because we don't need that for this sample. And then we are adding our client for GitHub as before. And then we are simplifying this down to just the authorize and token endpoint just to demonstrate this. And then down below, we have the callback from GitHub where we're just reading in a couple claims into our local cookie on the identity server. And then in the authorize endpoint, we are checking that the user's logged in. If they're not logged in, then we're going to challenge them. Otherwise, we're just going to read from the local cookie on that identity server, and then we're just going to issue the token back out. Like in the previous sample, we have the worker that registers the client. I recommend just doing this ahead of time or using a script. And inside the client, pretty much nothing has changed from the other sample. So let's start this. So the major change that we have is there is no UI for the OpenID Connect server. So the only thing that we need to do is just interact with the client application. We're going to click log in. It's going to go over to the identity provider. It's going to go over to GitHub. Once we're at GitHub, it's going to return back. And then we're going to have a session state on the identity server, which is going to return back here. And then, as you can see, now we're logged in. And that concludes the second demo. So in closing, here are some best practices. So to protect our tokens, what we're going to want to do is register with the ASP.NET Core Data Protection. You can refer to those documents in order to set that up, but in order to integrate that with OpenIDict, we just need to add in the options under our client server and validation. On top of that, we're going to register our own certificate. We can either do that using Azure Key Vault or Azure App Service. Or if we're hosting it on premise, we'll just use the local machine store. That works perfectly fine. And then keep in mind to make the ID token small. We only want to include what is necessary to authenticate the user into our application. We can just use the user info endpoint for most claims like name, email. So just keep in mind that the second sample was meant to be a minimal reference implementation. And here are some resources. I recommend going to the OpenID docs. It's pretty thoroughly complete about everything you would need to know about this. And then you can go through the OpenID samples. It has all kinds of different samples ranging from desktop, Blazor, web, app, web apps. So don't worry about that. And then a special mention to Kevin. He's a creator and maintainer of OpenID. So check out his blog. He has gone through many different scenarios that people have come to him with. So, so if you have something specific in mind, feel free to go to the GitHub issues in OpenIDict or go over to his blog and see if he's already covered it. So if you want to contact me, my email is here along with my GitHub. Thanks for being here through this presentation. Enjoy the rest of .NET Conf.